Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Robin Hood Sherwood Builders Bandits Trail. This is the prologue and it has come out today. We're going to jump into this for the first time when you're playing this. It is free to play right now on Steam. You can go and play it for now for free for a limited amount of time. Uh, so go ahead and jump in and play this yourself. But I'm going to run you through this, show you everything there is you need to know over the next few videos. So let's just jump in and get started. Here we go. So we're going to hit play and we're going to go for a new game. Now the initial part of the game is going to give you a story and it's going to talk you through some of the things you need to do. So let's just watch the story and then we'll continue. Robin of Loxley survived the burning suns of faraway lands as he served his role in the Unforgiving Crusades. He emerged unscathed from deadly skirmishes just to become an exile and face mightier enemies in his own home country. After his previous hideout in Silwich, which was razed to the ground, the forests of Sherwood granted refuge to him and his retinue, while its new rulers threatened all. King Richard the Lionheart's untimely demise plunged England into chaos and left roving bands and their petty warlords free to fight amongst themselves for territory and influence. The Sheriff of Nottingham, a murderer and usurper, exploiting the pervasive lawlessness, pillages one area after another, increasing his power and leaving the poor residents of Sherwood at the mercy of wild fate. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, here we go. A new quest has started, and we can see that in the top left-hand corner, it says a safe haven. We need to speak to Tuck. In the bottom left-hand corner, we can see we have our water, food, perception, health, stamina, and that's all there. And in the top middle there, we have a compass. So W, A, S, and D to move. Shift allows you to run. Um, that's the main controls. But at the moment, nothing really to do. Apart from head down this path so let's go and as we start to arrive you start to see a few things that are happening this is your camp so we're gonna head down here and it's going to start giving you pop-ups so the first thing it asks you to do is to select a combat mode dynamic or precise dynamic means that it's free movement um, but precise means it locks onto an uh, locks movement while attacking onto an enemy so we're just gonna go for this for now Difficulty level, Rogue, Outlaw, or Legend. Uh, so we're going to just go for Rogue for now for the purpose of this run-through. We can always change that later in the settings if we need to. So as we start to move forward, we're heading right now, if you look at the very top center on the compass, we're heading for that uh, quest alert. And you can now see it right in front of us. All right, so here we go, the first tutorial. This is the introduction. So Robin Hood's main goal is to liberate the four regions in central England which you can access by pressing J, uh, from the rule of the Sheriff of Nottingham and his followers. Eliminating enemies and aiding the defenseless through quests and events increases Robin's reputation in a given region. All right. Achieving a score of 40% reputation in a region unlocks the ability to start its main story quest, whose successful conclusion ultimately liberates that region. So, very interestingly, that the only way you can start the main story quest is to gain the reputation. Normally, in games, you complete the story quest and then you can do the other things afterwards. This is the other way around, which I quite like. It's a nice, fresh approach. When you're exploring a region, you'll encounter events and quests that will bring you closer to completing your adventure's main goal, which you can access by pressing M. Some of these will include the map. All right, so this will all... Uh, later get more more context to it. Remember it is the prologue. It is early access Saving villages village residents from execution escorting them and rescuing them from kidnappers Attacking convoys warehouses and tax collectors Defending people against corrupt knights ruthless soldiers forest raiders and many other threats your character's development will depend on the effective use of skill points and the expansion of your own settlement, allowing you to craft the necessary items, gain special abilities, or produce the necessary raw materials. All right, so let's continue to move forward. We already know there's a base building element, there's a questing element, there's going to be a gathering element, and now we also know there's gonna be a managing element. So let's just go straight ahead here 
And as we run past the well, it tells us food and hydration. Remember to regularly check your indicators of hunger and thirst. If you neglect either of these conditions, it will have lethal consequences. And we can see that here, here's the thirst and the hunger. So make sure you don't run out of either of those. Simple food items can be found in the world or bought at the traders. You can construct a kitchen in the village that will enable the preparation of much fancier meals. Water is a far simpler matter. Luckily, you just need to find a well and have the required empty bottles on you. Don't be fooled though, bottles are significant items that need to be managed well. They can determine the success of your mission more than once. All right, so with that being said, let's continue to move forward. And here we are, we can see Friar Tuck. Let's say hello. I always worry when you're away from home for long, Robin. My good friar, the sheriff will face death well before I do. Haughty as always, I'm just glad to see you in good health, friend. Don't worry, we're not in danger this time. We're safe here. Nothing I can do after the nightmare that the Crown's men brought on us and our old home. This time they won't run into us. We're well hidden. I saw to that. The previous settlement was so goodly. I know you all too well, you crafty fox. I'm aware you're scheming to fight back. What matters is everyone made it out alive. After I defeated Black Henry and freed Marion, the sheriff completely lost his composure. I must stop the enemy before he becomes too powerful. The enemies, the king and sheriff, don't stop at their own henchmen. You constantly hear about ever more scoundrels plaguing the surroundings of Nottingham. King's allies grow in numbers. Some are bought with land assignment, others threatened with death and confiscations. We must weaken the grip of the king and the sheriff if we are to feel safe here. Definitely, Robin. Recently, little John had his shirt cut. We can't take risks like that. He'll recover. You know him. We each have our crosses to bear. You say so yourself. Well said. You may be right. This settlement seems secure. This time, no one will find us. Time to let an arrow loose right into the beast's heart. I believe you, dear Robin, but before you do that, you must regain your strength. Setting up a new village is exhausting work. Eat something, have a drink, rest in your home. We'll talk later. Okay, so there's the introduction. We can see that we had a home, we had a base, it was great. We've had to move somewhere else and we're starting out again. So, equipment and inventory. This is what the inventory looks like. You can find all of your equipment in it. You can access it at any time by pressing I. Holding down the tab to access it during the game, you can also use the hotbar items by pressing the relevant number key. Your backpack has a limited capacity and carry weight. As you progress through Robin's skill tree, you'll be able to increase the amount of space in your inventory. Sometimes in the course of your travels, you may find yourself in possession of special items. These are typically related to quests. They weigh nothing and take up no space in your inventory. In the world, you will come across several sets of weapons. Each consists of several items. Armor, gauntlets, trousers, and boots improve Robin's skills needed in battle. Parts such as the hood, shoulder, and cloak are items that only affect appearance. Without protection, the forest of Sherwood will be impossible to survive, even for the craftiest of outlaws. Special gear can be produced in the weaving mill, which can be constructed in Robin's village. The armor Robin wears can only be switched out for another. Robin always wears armor or it can be sold to a merchant, but it's worth to remember, however, that crafting and collecting isn't always the easiest feat. Items you no longer want in your inventory can be discarded on the ground, but remember, however, that they will most likely disappear irretrievably after time. If you don't want to lose anything, put it into a safe place, preferably in your chest. All right, so now we have a few things that we know we need to do. We need to eat some food, and we need to drink some water. So let's press I and go ahead and get into our inventory. All right, so here we can see we have our hotbar on the left-hand side, numbers one through to nine. We have our inventory on the bottom here, which has our capacity, our weight, and how many coins we have. And we can also filter this between construction, alchemy, cooking, crafting, equipment, and other. 
All right, and if we turn that off, it'll uh, it will uh, choose everything. Uh, well fed additional damage, uh, health restored over time, stamina restored over time, sustaining poison damage, uh, sustaining fire damage, or sustaining bleeding damage. These are the alerts that you will see on the front end. Here we have our shoulder, we have um, our armor, our trousers, our gloves, our boots, and we have our cloak. Remember that the shoulder and the cloak are for appearance. And boots, gloves, armor, and trousers uh, all count into armor. We've also got our quiver, where our arrows will be. And we have an option to drop items. We can also craft some basic items as well, but for that we need some materials. So to make a makeshift bow, we would need a bowstring and 10 pine. And for wooden arrows, we would require 5 pine. If you hover over this, it will tell you in the bottom right where you can collect these items. The wood of this tree has a bright and pleasant color. It is light and soft, yet allows the creation of durable structures. Okay, so for crafting or construction, it's located in the forest in either Barnsdale or Sherwood Forest. Perfect. All right, so that's everything that we need to know about pressing I. Now, we can see here we have some food. There is a skewered boar, which is a solid portion of crunchy meat. Uh, gives us plus 80% hunger instantly and plus 30% health instantly. And it weighs 0 0.3. So we're going to put that in slot number one. Also here we have some water. Oh, actually we're going to put that in slot two and three because we also have a simple sword. We're going to put that into slot one. We also have an empty bottle here and we have a yarrow potion. We're going to put that at the bottom in slot number nine. This is our health regeneration. It gives us plus 30% instantly and 10% over time. It also gives us 10% thirst instantly and it lasts for 15 seconds. All right, so now we have all of that. We can press escape to come back to our main menu. Now we have a, we have water. So if we grab some food, we can eat our food. Uh, I'm pressing the number two on the hotkey. I'm now pressing the number three on the hotkey. Remember, I can also press tab and it will show me where these items are so I can see number three. Or I can also select this. I'm going to drink the water. I now have an, obtained an empty bottle. So let's go back to this well and let's press E. Now we're in the well, we can craft. We have two bottles. If we take both of these bottles and craft, we will get water. We now have two water bottles. So remember that that is how you will fill up your water. All right, so now we have that. We need to go and sleep in our home. So our home is here. We can see it by the exclamation mark. And we can go over this way. And we can head inside. At this point, you might be tempted to look around. You're more than welcome to do that. But for now, we're just going to head over to the bed and we're going to sleep. So sleeping is important. It not only allows you to save progression, but it also restores your health. Look for places marked with owls and lanterns. This is where you will be able to rest. Be careful, though. After a sleepy night, your hunger and thirst will get the best of you. The game auto saves whenever you fast travel or walk up close to a signpost or stable master. There is no auto save in combat, during an event or during instances related to some quests. Please make sure you remember to save, don't get caught out like I already have. Alright, let's go ahead and sleep. We're going to go to the bed and press E. And now we can save. So I'm going to go for this free slot, I'm going to click on that there and now I've slept. So now I've woken up, I'm thirsty again, I can take a drink. In the bottom left you can see I've now sorted out my hydration. I now need to go and speak to Tuck. Alright, let's go and do that. There's a lot of stuff that we can do, picking things up, looking around, and we'll get to that. Uh, but for now we're going to click on the well. We're going to craft our bottle of water so it's refilled. And we're going to head over back to Friar Tuck and have another conversation. Have you already managed to get some rest? Good friend, it'll never cease to amaze me how little sleep you need. This can't be healthy. It's good for you, as long as you have water instead of wine, good friar. I'm not swayed by this. Besides, those who sleep don't sin. I'll keep my wine. <laughs> I knew how you'd react. Take it easy, Tuck. Your cask supply is safe. I should think so. It's a strategic reserve for a time of crisis. Certainly. Not another word. I take it you slept so well you misplaced your weapon. Where is your bow? 
This time I didn't lose anything. I broke it during a hunt. We've had so much work with building a new village that I haven't had time to craft a new one yet. The forest hasn't been kind to us of late. The worst is behind us, however. And now you can take to making your bow in peace. Grab a hatchet and fell a few trees. The wood should suffice for both the bow and the arrows. I have a hemp cord here that should do as a bowstring. That's all the help I need. Thank you, Tuck. I know how much you value your weapon. See to crafting it, but be right back. Our village needs your help. Okay, so now we need to go and get some pine. We need to chop trees and collect wood. So let's go into our inventory. We've been given two items here. We have a stone hatchet, which we need to be able to chop down trees. And we have a bowstring. So now what we need to do is go and gather to make a bow. We need to gather 10 pine. All right, so let's look on the map. This is the map. Press it. Uh, press M to access it. You can see where we are. We are this uh, dot here, this green dot. And there are two areas. I've up here or over here. We can go to either one to collect our pine. All right. There's a lot of other stuff on the map. And we're not going to go through that right now. We'll come back to this later. Remember, we also have the J key that we can press here. This will show us our active quests. Uh, it will also show us the districts and our... Um, our percentages that we have in terms of our reputation, any main or side quests that we're doing, uh, also as well as active, we have completed, we have tutorials that we've already gone through, and any history and things that have happened. On the left hand side here, we can go back to our inventory, we can come to the journal, or we can also look at the skills menu uh, that was mentioned earlier, we'll talk about this uh, in a little while, and uh, we've also got the map, and then we've got some active skills. All right, so let's have a quick look at these passive skills. Right now, there are only six available. We can have max weight. We can have sword fighter, which is sword damage. Stroke of luck, which is critical chance. We can have fast senses, which is our hunter vision react uh, reactivation time. Or we can have some max health. Well, at the moment, we know that we're going to have to carry some weight. So let's go ahead and unlock this. It now gives us two options. So we can get a plus 10% durability for our tools or we can get deep pockets which gives us plus eight in terms of our inventory slots but this is a two cost now and on the right hand side you can see your available skill points so if we do this it'll increase our inventory um, but we've only now got three points available so now we have a carpentry we have a miner and we have a durable tools now we know that we need to do carpentry because we need to do wood cutting damage so let's do plus 10 percent on the wood cutting damage all right, and then we have other options that are available to us should we need them. But I think that's enough for now. We can go ahead and apply this. We're going to get all of these additional perks as a result. And that is now set. We've now set our skill tree. We can actually choose a path of a craftsmanship. Um, there's a lot of other ways we can go as well. Dexterity, shadows, endurance, arrow. And we can build that out uh, a bit later. But for now, let's just head in a direction that we need to go in. So if we have our sword equipped and we're walking around, you're going to see things very differently than if you had your axe equipped. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But now we're going to talk about the trader. This is the art of trade. Traders can be found in villages and towns throughout the realm. They happily buy and sell items in exchange for gold. Every trader has their own specialization, which determines what they can sell you. Fortunately, they'll buy whatever you're willing to unload. If you want to earn more from trading, remember to develop the skill in the skill tree, which affects just that. To buy an item you're interested in, select it from the list, choose the amount, and press buy. To sell an item, do the same thing on the sell offers. Alright, so this is the trader. We're not going to use that just yet, we're going to continue round, and as we head out, we're going to see one more building here. This is a village to build. Expanding your village is a means to help you develop and gain new skills. However, before you can start building structures, you need to uproot enough trees to make room. To move around in builder mode, use the directional keys. The camera can be rotated with your mouse as you right click. As you expand your village, you can choose one of the smaller trees you want to cut down and then construct a selected building in its place. Trees cut down go into the storage, that way nothing is wasted. 
Don't forget that you need the right resources for construction. This goes for both building materials and food for villagers assigned to work, which need to be kept in a special storage building. They will be automatically used when building. The number of able-bodied workers is strictly tied to your village's population. In order to increase the population, you must build special houses on trees. Every building has its own unique function that allows for progress in increasingly difficult quests. Village buildings are divided into four categories. Crafting is used to produce special and unique items such as bars, armor, potions, swords, and food, etc. Special buildings are responsible for the production of raw materials. These allow you to delegate jobs such as hunting, chopping trees, or mining raw materials to the inhabitants of your village. Honing skills improves Robin's ability in hunting, shooting a bow, melee combat, etc. Decorative, which serves to enhance the village's aesthetics through placing fences or pavements. If you want to construct any building or structure, you have to place the correct materials in the village storage. Buildings can be managed, upgraded or demolished when you click on a building in its options display. The village community consists of builders whose main task is to expand the village. They can also be assigned to other roles such as hunter, fisher, herbalist or miner. Each of these roles provide a resource which can be sent to the village storage or to Robin's inventory. In order to build up the village, remember to relieve builders of their other tasks. All right, so a lot to cover there. And if you ever need to go back, you can just come into the menu and you can go into your journal, which is J and come across to tutorials and everything is here. So you can always go back through this at another time if you need to. All right, so before we head out, let's head into this building here. And this is our chest. This is our storage chest. If we open this up, you'll see here on the right hand side, this is our storage. So this storage, which can be upgraded, is where you will place your materials. Your materials will need to be in your storage in order for you to be able to use this desk. This is how you will manage your village. Press E and you now go into the village builder mode. But we're not going to do that right now. We'll come back to that later. Right now, what we need to do is we need to go and find these trees. So we're going to equip our axe. And in doing so, with our axe equipped, you'll be able to see these trees. They glow green at the moment, and so you'll easily be able to identify the ones that you can cut down. Now, you can't cut any other trees at the moment if they're not green. And also, you can't cut them with a sword or any other item. If I try and cut this tree with a sword, you'll see it says acquiring resources. Mining raw materials is a tough job, but you can speed it up and improve your work. All you need to do when mining is to strike at the right moment, which is shown by the cursor icon. And you will reduce the time and stamina required for the next swing. Tools and weapons have their uh, determined durability level and it increases with each use. When it reaches zero, the item succumbs to destruction. When a tool or weapon breaks, usually that just means it is time to make a new one. However, if you're particularly attached to an item, you can use a precious hard to obtain repair tool and this can help you to restore your equipment's durability. Every tool you own has its own sharpness level. It determines the type of resource that you can extract from the environment. The better the tool, the rarer and the more valuable the resource you can get with it. All right, so we use our sword to cut down a tree and it says zero and you can see we get this feedback so we have to make sure we're on the right tool so we have our hatchet and you can see there we got 14 damage and you also see when i press this you have that white icon now if we press this continuously it looks like this at this speed now let's see if we can hit it uh, we'll do the next tree uh, so now that's just knocked that down we can pick this up by pressing e we've got some pine uh, there is another tree just around here. I think it's this one. Nope. Could be this one. Nope. So you'll know the trees you can hit. They're the ones that are the green color. There was one here. All right, we'll go back for this one here. It's the bright colored branch. 
This time we're going to try and hit when the icon or the cursor appears. You see we hit much quicker and we use a lot less stamina as a result. Uh, we still manage to obtain everything that we need. So right now we have 13 out of the 15 pine that we need. So we're going to do one more tree, which is just here. There we go. So now we have all of that. We can now go into our crafting and character development. So owning to Robin's crafting skills, you have an easy time crafting some basic equipment. Select the items that interest uh, you in your inventory, choose the amount and click the craft button. Items that need more specialized equipment such as swords will require you to return to the village and use specially designated buildings. Learning new ways or improving the ones already known requires experience. You can gain it in many ways from fighting enemies, completing quests, extracting resources, hunting and gathering to construction. So everything you do helps to level up your character. Skill points can then be used to develop the skill tree or spent on developing buildings in that village that affect your special skills. Knowledge is power and skill points can also be found in a world in a form of books or scrolls. All right, so we're gonna pick up these materials. We now have that, we can go into I and we can now make a makeshift bow. We have the pine, we have the bowstring, we click craft and now this is going to craft. We can put that into our inventory now. So we're going to put that into slot number three. And we also need to make some wooden arrows. So let's craft those as well. Now we can't use these arrows unless we place them into our quiver. So now they are here in our quiver. And we can do that in one of two ways. We can either drag them with the left click. Or we can just right click and it will automatically place them for us. We now have two pine left over. If you want to, you can go and collect some more trees. Uh, you will get experience for doing that. You'll also get some more pine. Um, but for now, we're done. We can just go back and speak to Tuck. We've now done everything we need to do around our village. We've seen everything available. And we've managed to craft our basic items. With a bow like this, you have nothing to fear. Unless you get on Marion's bad side again by telling her to cook for you. Even the purest steel and holy water wouldn't help you then. Time's long past. We've explained things to each other and agreed I wouldn't make this mistake again. <laughs> uh, speaking of whom, have you seen her anywhere? Be at ease. This time no one lured her into a trap. She left to help the locals. She'll be back sooner or later. That sounds like her. You said you could use my help here? Yes, there are many things we need. Food, most of them all. A better archer couldn't be found in all of Sherwood. Before you set off to take from the rich, perhaps you could use your skills to aid us. I'll gladly try out the new bow. Stoke the fire. We're having a roast tonight. I'll leave the meat in storage. Everyone in the village is working so intensely, a small feast should lift their spirits. Okay, so now we have the great hunt. One way of securing food is through hunting. Luckily, there's no shortage of game in the local woods. A hunter's skillful eye is bound to promptly spot prey where it is most easily found. And we can see that on the map by these icons. Those are alert, careful creatures. Sometimes they're a tricky quarry. It is essential to approach them carefully and make a good use of your archery skills. To use your bow, all you need is a few arrows and a free arm to draw it. Senses are one of your more important skills. They develop significantly. Uh, their development significantly affects gameplay and it is possible by developing the trapper's hut in your village. Hunter's vision and tracking are the most useful senses when hunting. However, remember to also develop intuition and keen eyesight, the levels of which improve the performance of the other senses. And we can use that by pressing R. Just as useful while hunting as during a fight is the ability to make the passage of time seem slower to Robin by pressing F. It allows him to more easily manage his targets. This, as well as other skills, can be improved in the skill tree. So we now have senses, uh, hunter vision, and slow motion. So let's just try those out before we go anywhere else. If we press R, we can now see we're in this mode. Now this mode does drain, and so we have to wait for it then to 
uh, to recover. Uh, but we do get to see resources on the ground, we get to see objects, we get to see quests and other things. And the icon for that is in the bottom left hand corner, it is the eye icon. So we can press this, we can look around, we can see all of the people and things we can interact with um, as a result. We can go and pick them up. The other one was F. F allows us to slow motion things, so now everything is in slow motion. This is going to be extremely helpful when we're hunting. Uh, if we put things into slow motion, however, you can see it drains our stamina. We have to wait for the slow motion to be available again. This is the other icon in the bottom left hand corner, which is the three lines and then the triangle. You can see just below the food and above the perception. So when I press this, it drains. And then as I hold it down, it continues to drain my stamina until I move or I let go. There we go. That's everything you need to know. And that's it for the introduction. We've kind of looked around at the moment. We now understand we can pick up stones off of the ground. We know how to uh, use our axe for trees and how to see those trees. We also know how to equip our sword and our bow and arrow. And with our bow and arrow equipped, uh, all you need to do is press right mouse button and that will aim. And then left mouse button draws back your bow. And we can look around. Now if we want to we can press F that will slow things down but if we do that we have to be careful because as you can see if we hold this aim for too long we start to move. That movement there is something that happens as a result of us holding that for too long. So that's everything we need to know. Join me in the next video where we're going to go hunting and complete this next quest.